What is going on, Dees and Dees of the Interweb? Thank you so much for clicking. I am AJ, and let's get right into this video. Today, we will be talking about the best albums released in 2019. In my opinion, of course, and my opinions are exactly what they are, opinions, not facts, okay? Y'all already know what we're about to do, so without further ado, Let's get into this goddamn list. Coming in at number 10, we've got Love Plus Fear by Marina. You know, it was actually crazy because there was a point when I was certain this album was going to be my album of the year. But Norman Rockwell happened and um, here we are today. Musically, this album is vastly different from Marina's previous work. She took a more conventional route in terms of sound, and I feel like that made this album more accessible on my initial listen than her previous work. There was actually a point when I connected to this album on several levels, but eventually I started listening to the album from a more analytical perspective and the things I once adored eventually became the things I think did this album a disservice. Marina ventured into different sounds, which is great, but unfortunately, that is one of the album's pitfalls. It doesn't flow naturally. It's not a consistent or cohesive body of work sonically. It's not Marina's best work lyrically either. I mean, don't get me wrong, there was, the songwriting was good enough to evoke emotions. However, we've heard better from Marina. Um, I really loved her vocals on this project and I actually really appreciated her creativeness in terms of song and melody composition. It's not necessarily uh, a flawless project, however, it's good enough to earn a spot on my best albums of 2019. Coming in at number nine is When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? by Billie Eilish. Like most of y'all, I came across Billie in 2017 when I listened to her very impressive Don't Smile At Me EP. And it's still in rotation till this day. It was such a unique and captivating body of work, which left me genuinely curious about her future projects. And she didn't let me down with her her debut album. The production and the beat arrangements were fresh and new. They weren't too experimental or overpowering. They actually complemented her breathy vocals and the um, melodic composition. I was very impressed by an artist like Billy overtly addressing uh, subjects like substance abuse. You know, she was encouraging people not to use drugs and that is admirable especially because majority of her peers in the music industry glorify illicit drug usage so kudos to billy don't smile at me ep remains superior in my books however this album was one of the better sounding and better constructed albums I heard in 2019. That's why it earned a spot on my list. For number eight, we have Lover by Taylor Swift. One of the main reasons why I love this project is because for the first time, Taylor expanded on topics that seem to have been hushed in the past in order to preserve a certain image that was possibly created by her record label. On this project, she showed her support for the LGBTQ plus community on tracks like You Need to Calm Down. She talked about the double standards in the music industry on tracks like The Man, and she actually talked about her political stance on tracks like Miss Americana and A Heartbreak Prince. I was impressed by her songwriting, but that is Taylor Swift's forte. She is great at painting pictures. One thing I gotta say about this album is it's not her most cohesive body of work. I mean, but that's kind of hard to do when you have 18 songs. Certain tracks sounded out of place and certain tracks really shouldn't have existed. Me, 
You know I'm talking to you, ho. Okay? Anyways, this album was still an easy breeze. Still is an easy breeze. And it's definitely one of my favorites of 2019. Coming in at number seven is Igor by Tyler, the Creator. This was actually the first full body of work by Tyler I listened to. And the only reason why I heard it was because DJ Khaled was throwing a fit. Because his album was number two while Tyler's was number one. And I decided to give both albums a listen. And there's a reason why his album was number two and Tyler was number one. This album was exquisitely produced. That is one of the main reasons why it made this list. The production blew me away from the first track with that distorted instrumentation all the way to the 12th track. And I loved the sequencing of the album, especially when it came to the album's theme, which was basically the unfortunate demise of a relationship. He told a beautiful story. It had a beginning, a middle, and an end. This album was beautiful and I'm so glad DJ Khaled threw that fit. Okay, Tyler, you gotta thank DJ Khaled because th this man made me listen to this album, okay? For number six, we have Cause I Love You by Lizzo. This was actually my introduction to Lizzo as an artist. Prior to this, I had no idea who she was and I never heard a song, but I'm glad things took a turn for the better. This album was grand, it was theatrical, it was funny, it was witty, it was emotional, it was soulful, it was empowering. Artistically speaking, Lizzo sounded like nobody but herself. And that is the beauty about this album. There wasn't a dull moment on this project. She toned it down when necessary and she hyped it up when necessary. I absolutely love this body of work and if you haven't checked it out, please do. Coming in at number five, we have Truth Is by Sabrina Claudio. I was so happy with this project because it was such a drastic improvement from her debut album, No Rain, No Flowers. That was such a letdown, especially because it comes right after her mixtape, the phenomenal About Time. That mixtape is still in rotation till this day. This album in particular was beautifully composed. It had a consistent theme and she utilized her strongest acid to its fullest potential and that happens to be her sultry voice. She harmonized when necessary, she layered when necessary, and there were times when she actually used her vocals as an instrument. I was so impressed with this body of work. Coming in at number four, we have Thank You Next by Ariana Grande. I finally got exactly what I needed from Ariana, her most personal and eclectic album to date. It had no features, which actually worked in her favor because she got to be a lot more introspective and fun and raw and real than she's ever been in her past catalog. This album felt fresh. It didn't feel recycled at all. The harmonies and the vocals were beautiful as usual. And to me, there's not a skip on this album. Well, except for Ghost and of course, because you got to be in a certain mood to listen to that damn song. But other than that, this album was certainly such an improvement from Sweetener. I absolutely love it. Coming in at number three, we have Titanic Rising by Wise Blood. I actually never heard of this album up until this year when a handful of you were raving about her album. And so I decided to give it a shot. And funny enough, on my initial listen, the only song that stood out to me was Movies. So I had no intentions of revisiting the album. But then one day I was listening to a shuffled playlist and movies came on and that experience was out of this world. So when that was done, I was like, hold up. How is it possible that this song is so damn stunning yet not a single song is worth a revisit from that album? So I decided to get in the right mindset 
put on my headphones and actually listen to feel. And it's been history ever since. This album was beautifully constructed and produced. Each song felt like an experience, yet it didn't feel like a collection of songs. It felt like a cohesive body of work. The melodies and the vocals were stunning and the lyrics were gorgeous. If you haven't heard this album, please give it a listen. But you gotta be in the right mindset, just so you know. For number two, we've got Magdalene by FKA Twigs. You know what's crazy? I never heard of FKA Twigs either, y'all. There's so many first artists on this list and I was so impressed. This was such an emotional roller coaster. It was raw, it was real, it was innovative. It was so amazing. It's so stunning. And the thing is, it gets better with every listen. She immersed herself in this album and you could feel it. She evoked every single emotion she could evoke out of me. I was angry with her. I was sad with her. I was, I was, I guess, happy with her. She was never happy. You know what, this album, stunning. My number one album of the year is the one and only Norman Rockwell by Lana Del Rey. Yo, you know what? I said everything I needed to say about this album in my reaction video. The first time I heard it, I fell in love and nothing has changed ever since. Lana Del Rey outdid herself. How she did it, I don't know. This is definitely my favorite Lana Del Rey album of all time. Well, we have finally come to the conclusion of our year end list. And please let me know in the comment section what albums released in 2019 were your favorites. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share. Have a Merry Christmas if you celebrate. If not, have a great day. Bye!